Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Uh, I'm Emily. I'm an alcoholic. I am. I'm not prepared for this at all. Bob just approached me outside and asked if I could come in here. I'm just kidding. Uh, But it was only a couple days ago, to be honest with you. Um, And I thought to myself when I was asked to come out here and um, and speak at a big book workshop, and I was asked to pick a topic. um, I tried to not limit myself at all because my you know my ego gets in the way, and I want to. I want to at least be able to fill up the time, you know, and so I thought, what's the most general thing, and what's the biggest thing that I can honestly, like, draw from the most experience from, and and the more that I, I'm in this, pro- in this program, the more I go through this book and go through the work with other people, I see how, um, you know, our, our main objective here is to come to rely upon a greater power, and in order to do that, I need to face fear, um, and or and and what it all boils down to is courage, you know, and and that's um and that's walking through the fear. It's not not having it. Uh, it's it's allow it's allowing it to come and pass, and and still relying that there is something bigger at work. So I just want to go back a little bit to um the way that I was brought up, and I, I won't stay too long in this because everyone has their own experience. Um, but the way that I was brought up was, you know, the world was a very scary place. And, and I know that a lot of, a lot of people, uh, a lot of us can identify with that. You know, dad was one of us and he was, um, he never knew when there was going to be an aggressive or violent outburst, you know, and, and it was very unpredictable. And, and mom was mentally ill. And, and, and her, her illness was triggered and emphasized by my dad's drinking. And, and it became that she was so severely depressed um, that she would, she would threaten suicide a lot. So I, I grew up with this unease and discomfort and insecure feeling about my well, not only my well-being, but the people around me. And, and I learned very early that I needed to rely upon myself. Um, and I had to be this power, and I had to control the circumstances, and that if I was just good enough, mom wouldn't end it all. Or if I was just good enough, dad wouldn't lose it, you know. And that started um, started the, the cancer, if you will, of self-will and how that showed up in my life up until today, even. Um, I remember when things were things were hard to handle at home. I wouldn't sit with fear. I couldn't handle it. I didn't have a higher power. I didn't have anything to to find comfort. And so when things started showing up in my life that would give me some sort of comfort, um, and for me it started out with a prescription. You know, I know that this is AA, but I, I speak the truth today. Um, and anything really, anything to get me out of me and not feel whatever emotions were going on inside of me. We all know this story, but as as things went on and, and, and I had to cope with this world around me having no reliance upon anything other than my own actions and my own behavior, I became a very controlling and manipulative person. And that was all based on ego. It was all based on self-preservation. And I, there was nothing for me to depend on that I was going to be okay at all. Everything good or bad in the world began and ended with me. So it wasn't long before I was, you know, especially my dealings with people. You know, I would say what I needed to say in order for the circumstance to be safe for me. And I would do what I needed to do in order for for you to serve me and my needs. Because without that, I wasn't going to get what I needed, and that's what I believed. Things were Things weren't good. I was emotionally disturbed. Um, I had all kinds of things going on. A lot of us do. I, I was severely anxious, and 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 I was displaying all this stuff that 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 psychoanalyst would want to diagnose me, you know. And really, the fact of the matter is, what 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 it came down to was I was full of fear. 
Um, the anxiety, I was full of fear. The OCD, I was full of fear. The eating disorder, I was full of fear. It was all fear. Um, and to, to today, no matter what's going on with my life, it all boils down to fear. And what am I afraid of? So I come into the rooms at a really early age. I'm a baby. Um, in fact, I, I probably only spent about six months, like, legally drinking in bars. And uh, not only did I not know anything about this God and higher power or, or trust, or belief, or like, certainly I didn't rely on anything to that effect. I was still operating in a way that I needed to set up my life. It was like the game of life, that board game. Um, and I was gonna, I was gonna pass through here, and I was gonna pick up the college education, and I was gonna pass through here, and the job, and the, and the little blue guy, no matter what his name was, and then the kids, and then, and it was all, and that's how I was gonna be okay. You know, that's how I was gonna avoid all that really ugly stuff that I saw that could happen to people. So I come into this program and, and, and I realize that my life is unmanageable, obviously, and, um, and the, this, this trust and faith is, I'm like, you know, I'm, co I'm coming to terms with that this might be the way because my way wasn't working. But if you ask me now, looking back, I certainly didn't behave like I trusted God. Um, I immediately got hooked up into a relationship and and I um, got married to a man not because of who he was but because it deep down satisfied this fear of ending up alone. Um, I remember thinking back being a kid and honest to God having that fear. I would sit around with my girlfriends at sleepovers and talk about who we were going to marry and all this stuff and I would really be frozen in fear at the fact that I was going to end up alone and die alone. Um, and I don't know if any of you can identify with that at 11 years old, but that was my driving force in life. Because you see, everybody bailed on me. Um, Pop bailed on me, mom bailed on me, my brother bailed on me, everybody bailed on me, and it was all left on me. And so I was going to create these outside circumstances to prevent that. And so I found this guy that pretty much, I could, I could pretty much bank on the fact that he was never going to leave me. He was, this man was never going to leave me. And that was the sole reason why I walked down the aisle. And uh, flash forward five years. And and I, I'm in this place where I have this, this marriage that's falling apart. And and now all this time I'm going through the work. Um, but it's, I'm never addressing that. I'm never addressing those real deep down fears. I'm addressing the one for spiders and needles. I'm not addressing ending up alone. I'm not addressing dying. I'm not addressing abandonment. Um, and, and that was my journey, though. I know that things, you know, like things are revealed to us when we're ready. But so I find myself in this, in this situation where I, I've discovered that, that this was all, this was all hoax, this was all a mess. And I've got this little girl who, who, um, is going to suffer for this because I took a hostage. Um, and so I sit there, and I'm going through the work again with a new sponsor because I'm miserable, and she can see that I need to be brought to some sort of faith um, in order to tackle this, these things that were going to happen in my life. Uh, and we start going through the work again, and I discover that um, I'm deathly afraid. I I'm, I'm so controlling. Like, fear shows up for controlling for me. I'm so controlling that I'm trying to force this relationship or, or avoid, like, all of these things that might possibly happen. You know, like, we might separate, and he might relapse, and and we might divorce, and he might turn out to be a real piece of work and, and, and take it and, and take it out on the kids, and, and, he, and, and he might not pay child support, and I may end up poor, and, and all of these things that trickle down. And, and I was faced with all that. And, and in that... I had to, um, rather than run like I did my whole life, rather than stuff that the truth deep down inside of me about what was really going on, I had to give it to God, and I had to face the fact that these things might happen. And, and it was in that fear that I was drawn closer to my Creator, because as it went on, and 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 as as the situation took its course, all those things did happen. And I found myself about a year later looking at 
the looking at the calendar and and realizing that it had been a year. And it had been like the longest, scariest year of my life. I mean, there was just so many god awful things that were going on and so much fear and so much um I don't know, there, were, there were times when I had gone to work and I had to go home because I was having such severe panic attacks that my legs were wobbling like this because I was so afraid of of how this was all going to turn out, you know. And, um, and I found myself a year later having done it and been okay and seeing all these different instances along the way where left to my own devices, I, I, everything would have fallen apart yet for some reason it was okay. Yet for some reason the bill got paid. The kid got watched. The ex stayed alive. That's what was all we're really hoping for at this point. Um, or away, at least, I guess is, you know. Um, and so it was in that, and it was in getting through that the roughest year and recognizing how all of my, the way that I had operated before um, just couldn't happen anymore. I just couldn't, I couldn't take hostages anymore and I couldn't, and I started understanding my gut and my intuition when I knew that I was doing something wrong, you know, and I knew that I was making decisions based on self. I started understanding what self looks like and what fear, how fear shows up in my life. You know, I'm going through the work and I start looking at like all these, you know, it was like my my sponsor at the time decided that we would take it a little further, and she gave me that list of like 300 character defects. Uh, it wasn't just the selfish, self-seeking. You know what I mean? So everything from, you know, I, all everything from being vulgar to being judgmental to being critical to be just every ugly possible thing that a person can do or be in any given relationship. And I had to look at all that, and every single one of them came from fear and so when I would come when I would have an, a situation and I realized that I'm being selfish here or I'm being greedy here or I'm being controlling and I, I'm, I'm asked the question so what are you afraid of and every single time it what it boils down to what it was taught to me was that no matter what the fear starts out as when I boil it down and I ask myself okay so then what happens Okay, so then what happened? Okay, so, so my, you know, one of my fears was that I'm going to end up poor. Poor. And so, so, okay, Emily, then what happens? Well, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills, and I'm going to lose my car, and, and, and I'm not going to be able to, to put food on the table. Okay, so then what happens? Uh, so then I have to start asking for help. There goes my ego. So then what happens? Um, then, and what it boils down to is it keeps going to I finally start, you know, admitting to things like, well, then I can't afford to buy new clothes. Then I can't afford to buy a car that I'm not ashamed of. And then I can't, you know, and then I can't afford to uh, keep up all these luxuries, you know, that, that keep me, give me some sort of identity, like the gym membership, you know, like the getting my hair done. Uh, the shoes, the all the stuff that I thought that made me what it was, and really what that all boiled down to was now I'm going to be unattractive and I'm going to end up alone. Um, and so every single fear that I've ever had and ever will have will always boil down to that. It will always be I'm going to end up alone or I'm going to die or I'm going to die alone. You know, I can take that another step further. It's like, okay, I, I'm going to end up really unattractive and no one's going to ever want to be with me and I can't hold up this lifestyle so then what happens? I can't eat. So then what happens? I die. Every single time it boils down to that. Um, I'm yet to find one that doesn't. So having gotten through this, this um, situation, I, I, I started really understanding what trusting God meant. You know, um, I started really understanding what that third step meant. Um, I started letting go a little bit and, and being letting God handle the outcomes and and walking through the fears, you know, when something felt uncomfortable for me, not running to, obviously, a drink or a drug, but also not running to attention from the opposite sex or food or money or shopping or any of it, you know, and sitting in it and feeling it and, and what they, you know, and, and understanding, comprehending the idea that, 
pain is the pathway to peace. That if I don't sit here and feel this fear, and I try to cover it up or bottle it up or distract myself from it, it's going to keep coming back. But if I sit here and I sit through this fear of possibly having to get really creative in ways that I'm going to feed my three-year-old and getting through that and coming out the other side, that fear has been lifted from me. I know I can do it. And in the story, God's not going to let us starve if I'm carrying out his will, and I know that today if I'm doing the right thing. So I, I have this, um, I have this illness, and it's an autoimmune disease, and it's really rare. And, and when I first got diagnosed, it, it, there wasn't a lot known about it. But as the years have gone on, um, the more they're learning about it, and the more that I'm learning about it, and the prognosis, like the scarier that it gets. And um, I'm starting to find out that that my diagnosis has changed over into a more serious form of the disease, and. One of the things that can go wrong, there's like a handful of things that can go wrong, and one of them is um, heart problems. Um, and so about two years ago, I started noticing that, like, my heart rate was spiking. It was getting really bad. I, I was hitting, like, I would be walking, and it was hitting, like, 190, my, my heart rate. And um, And so I, you know, obviously addressed it. And, and I found out, and I did a little bit of research because, you know, um, I had to see, like, specialists out of the state and stuff. And, and what I found was that, um, I, you know, when I went to the, the cardiologist and everything, that they basically had to rule out um, what commonly happens with people in, with my condition is pulmonary hypertension, and that prognosis is really, really scary. And I have this little girl who doesn't have a dad that's capable or has rights to her, and and for about a month or two, I um, woke up every day with that, you know. And, and I know today that, like, in order to accept something, I don't have to like it. So I can honestly say that I started accepting that, that I might not, this might not be a super long road for me. And, uh, and the most beautiful thing happened in that. It was, the hard, it was the scariest, like, month of my life, but I came out the other side with a pretty much clean bill of health, but with a whole new perspective on life, in that, like the Buddha says, you've all, the, the problem is, the trouble is you think you have time. And so I all of a sudden start now understanding and comprehending and believing in this one day at a time thing. You know, um, you know, it's... it's you know, to talk about it and to, and to wax poetic about, like, our mortality and things like that is all well and good. But until you're faced with that, until you're in a situation like that, you know, and that's when I started really understanding that I'm here for a reason. Um, or I would have died 10 years ago. I know that for a fact. I'm here for a reason. And so I need to figure out pretty quick what it is, you know, and, and I need to know that when I skid into my last day, that I've had some sort of positive impact on the people around me, especially my child. You know, I started thinking about all those fears that I had, and and you know, one of the things that one of the thing that I've one of the things I've learned about fear is that if I'm doing everything I can to avoid um, catastrophe, it's a lot easier to give the outcome up to God. So if I'm giving my all every single day to this little girl and giving my all to the people around me and spreading love and light in any way that I can, it's going to be a lot easier for me um, at the end of my life if it's next year or if it's 50 years from now. And so I start living this way, and the beautiful thing is that in doing so, I've had just the most incredible gifts. Um, and I'm okay, and I'm not obviously, like, as it stands today, I don't have to worry about about, you know, the ticking clock, but I have this whole new outlook on life and I have this whole new reliance upon God because I know that no matter how short or long it is, that if I just focus on what's good and what's, um, what his will would be for me and I have no regrets at the end, then I can go peacefully. And as morbid as that sounds, it's a, it's a really beautiful realization to have. I remember going to, not long after that, I was going on vacation with my sponsor at the time and she was making all these plans about, okay, we're going to do you know, these controlling things out of fear and these, like, 
trying to manipulate and, and control and, and we're going to meet here and you're going to play on this day and we're going to go here and blah, blah. And I'm like, gee, whatever. I'll get there. You know, and she's like, she used to say things to me like, Emily, are you smoking pot? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, this is, I have, the fear has left me. It has left me. Um, not that it doesn't come back, but the fear of these little things that don't mean anything. Um, I have a whole new perspective on that, you know. Um, so, I find that, you know, ever since, ever since having that experience, and, and all these painful experiences that happen, you know, along the way where I can feel it. Like, and I bring up the, the, the upbringing for this reason. Because it really, it doesn't, we all have the same story, but in different ways. But for me, I learned that in order to um, look at today, and my relationships with people today, objectively, I need to be free from the bondage of self, right? What does that mean? Well, that means that I need to not attach to you old fears that have to do with something else. Um, and in order to do that, I have to understand that like, no one can hurt me today. You can't hurt me. My boyfriend can't hurt me. My dad can't hurt me. My mom can't hurt me. But, but all, they, all anyone can do is rub an old wound. And if I don't understand what those old wounds are, I'm going to be trouble. I have to know what they are. I don't have to sit in them. But I have to know that like, if I'm sitting there and, and all of a sudden I get this horrible gut feeling. I need to know that it doesn't have anything to do with the person I'm talking to. And that I don't have to attach my well-being to that situation. That I can go back in my life and see where it's coming from and sit there and feel it. And feel it. Because that's the only way it goes, that's the only way it goes away. Um, the only way to get through to the other side is to get through to the other side. I can't walk around it anymore. I don't have that, I don't, I just don't have the luxury to do that anymore. One other specific instance that I just want to throw out there is that, so I have this like, this, this agreement with my father now. After 10 years, um, we, we, we kind of started building a relationship back again and it, and it was based on drinking at that point, but now I'm sober and he's doing his best. But um, we have this joint ownership of a home because um, I really believed that if I just if I own a home, that gives me some sort of security. I've since then learned that security is an illusion. Um, that doesn't really exist. It doesn't. It's an illusion. Um, but anyway, so I had this illusion that if I owned a home, that at some point, at some stage of the game, I would be able to put my child through college, or I would be able to give her a wedding, or I would be able to retire. You know, I thought that that was, you know, like most of us, like most of us operate. And things got really bad for a little while. My father started, uh, he was diagnosed with early Alzheimer's onset, and it got really ugly, um, and it's really nasty to deal with someone like that. And, um, and so one day, it just happened to be the, the day that I broke up with a, my boyfriend, he decides to tell me that he's done, he wants to sell the house. We own this house together. Um, I couldn't do it without him. Um, he wouldn't do it without me. And so I had like this crash down moment where it was like, okay, whatever security I was feeling in that relationship is gone, obviously. And that all happened because I did this takeaway prayer that we were just talking about. Um, I think some of you might have met my sponsor who wrote that one home for me. But, um, and so like the next day I had the relationship was gone and I had to feel like it was incredible with that one because the only thing that kept me holding on was like my self will. Like I was going to protect myself from being alone. I was going to protect my kid from not growing up without a father. I was going to protect myself from having to do this all alone and, and from being abandoned and all this stuff. And, and that was gone, and, I, and so I had to sit and feel all that. But then, like, that day, Pops had to drop the bomb, like, I'm done. I, I don't want to do this. I want to sell the house. And I remember looking over. I was sitting in the front room of my house, the front living room, and feeling, like, this incredible freedom. I looked at that front door, and I said to myself, 
and I just imagine I had this vision of me, a backpack, and Ava. I'm just going. I'm just going. Because now I know that I, there's, some, there's something out there for me to rely on. Why? Because I sat through all these other instances where I thought that I had security and, and, and I was and I was sidelined and smacked in the face with the fact that there's nothing secure in life. And having sat through and felt that, I've been okay with it. And so it's, and it's funny, I didn't walk out that door with her. Um, I know today that to not get all caught up in the moment, you know what I mean? And to like sit it out and, and all that. But um, it's funny because I, so for the next little while, I felt this incredible freedom where like the less, less is, like the less that I have my hands in, the less that owns me, the less I own, the less owns me, you know? And like how at the end of the day, all I really need is God. All I need. Um, I just wanted to, real quick, because we have some time, um, I didn't know how quickly I would get through, like, those certain things that I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, so I'll give you an example. Last night, Saturday night, we had, um, we started a new meeting down by me, and we had our first, and it, it's come off really well. Um, it's, it's another fellowship, and it's based on, um, it's kind of set out to be, like more for the younger crowd and and it was funny because I was speaking with with my sponsor the other day about how um how the outcome of that meeting has nothing to really do with me and that it's not for me and um I was just approached to help and and I think it's needed and so like I'm there to just you know like th these young kids came to me because I have some time and I might know a little bit about how to get something like this off the ground and and so we have our first business meeting last night and I I walked into it with as much as I know, as much as my, you know, my, my head, my mind, which we all know is like a total different separate entity for me now that I'm starting to learn how to curb a little bit, was telling me that when I sat down and I saw that our attendance was down in this meeting and all of a sudden my ego was hurt, you know, and I sat down and we had our business meeting and I brought it out and I started just really acting like a jerk um, to people around me. I started feeling really overwhelmed. Um... And so I go, so and it's not until I go and sit and look down in my inventory at the end of the night and, and, I, and I put that down on paper and I, and I realize that like, like I do every single time, well, what are you afraid of? You know? What are you so afraid of? And what it boils down is all self. It was all about like another thing that, you know, like afraid that it's not going to work out and what does it say about me and what is it? And so every single time, like, when I look at these fears, it all boils down to self, you know, and I can walk around this world, and I can be, and I can be running on that, um, and, and my little designs, and thinking that, that I know what's best, and at the end of the day, all that ever gets me is afraid and cowardly, you know, um, I'm kind of at a loss right now. And uh, I don't like to babble on just for the sake of babbling. So if it's okay, I'm going to open it up to question and answer comments. Um, if anyone would like to comment, the floor is open. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.